Hello. Hi, Jack. How's it going? How are you doing, Charles? You all right, mm -hmm. mate? Yeah, nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. February uh, 2021 for Little Fish. Things have really changed, I think, since then. Um, I found it really fascinating in a movie like this that it was so much about opening up, return to nature, um, going back outside. How does it feel to have a film like this right now? Yeah, I suppose you've um, put across there a couple of uh, points that I hadn't considered. Um, I, you know, I hadn't really coupled it with the sort of time in society at the moment, having just come out of a pandemic. And I guess a film that, or a story that does just celebrate natural form um, so much. So yeah, no, I, I hadn't considered that. Um, and uh, I guess, I guess it, yeah, I guess it, it does add to the poignancy, um, mm. the kind of time that, that we're releasing this. I mean, listen, I can tell you from my point of view, I was just glad to be back on set again. Mm. Um, I think this was my second job out of lockdown. And, um, you know, there, there was a point during the pandemic where it, it started to seem very like a very distant memory, uh, my working life anyway. Yeah, I mean, that was the last time we spoke was, you know, Little Fish was a film about being, uh, it was a film about a pandemic. Unbelievable, it was, it was so like sorcery, wasn't it? Like yeah, sorcery, and then yeah. it was conceived of had no uh, overlap, so it's just incredible yeah. with the timing of it. Um, for this film, it was nice to see too that you know you were back. I think on a on like a film red carpet, being around one of your films for the first time in three years. Um, yeah. You were at uh, London, and also you had a, a special screening of it. The film was at Telluride. What was it like for you? Did you get a chance to experience? Your own film? Do you do you watch a film like this? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. Um, yeah, I think depending on the material mm. um, and depending on how exposed you, you feel uh, through the, the making of it, I, I suppose it, that kind of determines uh, whether, you're, whether you're willing to watch it in a public space or private darkened room somewhere that, where no one can hear you scream. <laughs> um you know so yeah but, yeah in in this in this case i was i, I watched it in a pub oh. to be honest on my laptop i'm yet to see it in a theater um but yeah great buzz great buzz to be kind of back at the the whole sort of bells and whistles of releasing a, a film and um getting together on mass um but I'll be honest with you, mate, a film like this, there's so much nudity, there's so much intimate stuff. Mm. I couldn't bear to be in a, a theatre full of people uh, watching it. Um, you know, probably to my detriment, I just can't, I can't stomach that. I certainly couldn't watch it around uh, family, friends and family, etc. Just mm. because of the, the subject material. That's just me. I was going to say myself that I watched it on a screen, but I would like to watch it again in a theatre. I think for me, for for a, a dispassionate viewer that isn't involved in the making of it, I think I would experience it very differently on a big screen because it really it really hits hard. I, I wanted to say that right from the start. Um, I wasn't sure because, you know, you, you think to yourself, is this scandalous anymore? Is this really going to hit the same way? And it does. But I think that a lot of what hit for me, and, and you talked about this with your love of the book, is that it's very much about sort of the dissolve of a regressive system. And that's really what we're going through right now. You know, it, it feels so much like a parallel between, you know, when it was said, when it was written, and then that now when the adaptation takes place. So, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about how much you enjoyed the book. It's a bit of a pared down version. But how much do you feel like you're telling a story from then? And how much do you feel like you're telling a story from right now? I, I listen, Charles, I think you put that so eloquently. Um, uh, I, t I totally agree. Um, and you have articulated that far better than I feel I could. Um, I think, listen, from a creative perspective, you are aware um, that, that so much has evolved since the last telling of uh, 
this story um, on screen so much that you are kind of trying to evolve the story in, in some way yourself. Um, I guess one example of, of that is, you know, within the book, he's the character I played, Oliver Mellis, is, is, mm -hmm. is a lot of his speech is written colloquially, um, mm -hmm. which is, is, is quite, it's quite specific to that area. And I, you know, I, 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 I don't believe that if you if you unless you're from there you'd understand half of it, um, and that to me is a celebration. That that is D. H. Lawrence celebrating something uh, local, local for me, um, and so you know it definitely hold a lot more resonance uh, to, to me um, individually. Could I delve as far as D. H. Lawrence was able to uh, in the portrayal of that um, for this? particular picture no I don't think I could um so it became how you had to sort of think oh well, how do we do flavors of it how do we stay true to that um just try and keep that, that a, a level of richness to that quality but without alienating the audience um there, there's one example anyway of I'm sure a whole array of things that law more than myself had to comprehend in terms of presenting this story to a more modern day audience. Mm -hmm. Curious because in the press notes it says that Laura had found you from particularly Start Up and 71. But you know in your arc in your career that feels like you know great films both but you've matured so much as a performer. Oh I'd say that was my vintage year. <laughs> yeah that was a that was a good year for me. Yeah. And also that she <laughs> she said too that you were sort of the perfect balance of masculinity and it. you're the the balance of masculinity and femininity. I thought that was so fascinating too because you know those were both. I mean they were male movies. They were very male dominated movies. That's uh, yeah. That's um. I can sort of attest to that. I grew up in a household where it was fifty fifty divide. You know my parents were together. I had a younger sister. So, you know, there, there was definitely a, you know, 50-50 um, type scenario there, which was very, very healthy, uh, an environment to grow up in, um, you know. So yeah, maybe that, maybe that would offer an explanation to what Law's referring to. Mm -hmm. um, I'll pivot a little. One of the things that people talk about a lot and very noticeable is the chemistry. You know, film like this doesn't work if you and Emma don't have the bond that doesn't work that way. You, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you something you don't already know. A lot of actors in interviews rave about working with you. A lot of performers talk about you as someone they've really enjoyed working with. I'm wondering what you found with Emma. What, what did you enjoy most about working with them? Full commitment, totally driven at every turn, every, every day. Um, I know it's a superficial thing to say, but it's it's not to be taken for granted, man. Very punctual, very like um, turning up to to do a job. Very, um, yeah, that gets my respect straight away. Uh, and I think that's that's a great foundation to to build something on. And then came the trust, and then came the. Um, yeah, then came just the full enjoyment of, of the experience of working with them. Um, yeah, utmost respect. And uh, it would have been a very different experience had not been, that not been the case, for sure. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you in terms of, again, from the press notes, that you got to reunite with an old teacher of yours, with an old drama teacher for this project? Yeah, again, listen, I, that... I hope that is a continuation. Um, you know, this this we weren't the first, and I'm I'm sure it won't be the last. But with that man in particular, Ian Smith, he he has like a like an academic appreciation for literature, um, drama, script writing, and um, obviously D. H. Lawrence. Um, you know, we I, I grew up in a. a sort of similar area to him 
uh, geographically, that's how I got access to his uh, acting class in the first place. And um, the, listen, the man's changed my life. So I'll always, always look up to him as like a, like a great source of education. And do you know what? Again, should, you know, it should, doesn't, should never boil down to this, but he's never charged me a penny. Mm. Even the acting classes, I got, to, I got to attend them for free. And uh, that, like, how rare is that, you know? Mm -hmm. I got a chance. I haven't fully jumped in with it, and I want to, just because of availability. Your performance in the North Water, you know, the Canadian co-production was a, a series I was very, very interested in. Um, apparently the furthest north that has ever been shot on film must have, again, been another immersive experience. And now I hear that you're in Italy, perhaps shooting Ferrari. I don't know that uh, you might have that. I'm so curious when it comes to you because, um, you know, last time when you're paired with Olivia, you know, I'm watching her work in House of the Dragon now, which is a fantastic show. But it seems to me like when you're picking projects, you want to star in things, and this film definitely within that, that you want to be in, you know? What, what's it like for you when it comes to picking projects? You know, would you want to be in, say, a franchise? Or is it something where films like this and the projects you're choosing are really what you want to be doing? Yeah, I mean, look, the goalposts have shifted a little bit these days because now I have a mortgage, um, mm. which, you know, uh, I count myself very fortunate to be able to be saying that. But, you know, essentially... Uh, I act for a living, so, um, it, you know, I, I can remember starting out and my agent saying to me that, it, that just how, how advantageous a position it is to be in when you haven't got these uh, sort of financial bonds that are kind of perhaps influencing your creative choices. Um, you know, up until recently, I never had that. It, it was always... You know, everything that I wanted came my way. Um, far from it, you know, there's for every job that I'm proud of, you know, there's one or two where I auditioned for and I, I really wanted, I really wanted to chase and I was convinced I was right for and it didn't go my way, you know. So, um, you know, luxury of choice is a fine thing for sure. Um, but, you know, I think essentially you kind of have to work within the parameters of what what what's what's being given to you and i think artistic integrity uh should be should be um you know high up on the list when it comes to how you base your choices for sure it's not always that simple um but uh yeah i, I would stress that yeah i gotta let you go i just wanted to say how much i enjoyed as i always do this film I think it's so fascinating that it's the first Sony Netflix project so that people, I don't know if you've ever worked with Netflix before that they get to experience it that way, or if they choose on a big screen to see it that way too. But however people decide to watch it, I think this film is up there and it really has a lot going on, resonates, and I'm going to watch it another time. And I, I do appreciate your time as well. Ah, uh, Charles, top man. Listen, lovely talking to you, mate. Lovely Fully stuff. Fully agree. And Take the best care, yeah. Good man, thank you mate.